Hello everyone. Um, I wanted to make a couple videos to help you um, finish up module three. We ran through a few of these in class but very, very quickly. So I wanted to give you another opportunity to see these guys at a more reasonable pace. So let's start with domain of logs. So again, the domain rule for logs says that log base B of some stuff. So anytime that you have stuff inside a log, doesn't matter what your base is, you need to make sure that the stuff inside your log is strictly greater than zero. Um, can't take the log of zero, can't take the log of a negative number. The stuff inside has to be strictly positive. Now, um, so let's do a couple of examples. We're going to apply this, but we also have our other domain rules as well, and we're going to keep all of those in mind. Um, with your domain, other domain rules, I would always recommend that you do the fraction rule last. Um, with the log and the root rules, you can really do them in either order. Um, it might make more sense in your brain to do the root rule first and then the log rule, um, just because it'll be easier to be more restrictive, and that should make sense in a minute. Okay, so let's do number one here. So we have log base two of the square root of two x plus seven. So we have a log rule, a root rule, and a fraction rule. We have a log and we have a root. So we're gonna have to make sure we check both of those domain rules. So first, we're gonna check the root rule. Root rule says it depends on what your index is. Our index is understood to be a two here. And so since n equals two is even, that means we have some work to do. We have to make sure that the stuff underneath our radical, which is two x plus seven, is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so now we'll solve this out to see what x can be. We'll subtract seven from both sides. And now we can divide both sides by two. So that means that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 7 halves. Um, if your brain doesn't like that, you can put that in your calculator and write that as negative 3 and a half. Okay, so according to the root rule, x needs to be greater than or equal to negative 3.5. So here's negative 7 halves or negative 3.5. We can be equal to or anything bigger than that. Now, that's the root rule. But wait, we also have a log. So we have to apply the log rule. And the log rule says, it doesn't matter what your base is, the stuff inside your log, which here is the square root of 2x plus 7, that has to be strictly greater than 0. OK, so now to solve this, we're going to start by squaring both sides. And we get 2x plus 7 has to be greater than 0. And we actually just did the solving. We're going to do the same thing. Subtract 7 from both sides. Divide both sides by 2. And we get that x has to be strictly greater than negative 7 halves. This is almost the same but slightly more restrictive than what we had before. So everything that worked before works now except for negative 7 halves. This rule says, mm, I don't have an equal to sign. I can't include negative 7 halves. So we're going to remove that. That's an open circle, not a closed circle anymore. And now that we've done both the root and the log rules, we can write our domain. And our domain is anything strictly greater than negative 7 halves, which looks like this in interval notation. OK, so that's how we apply our log rules there or I guess our domain rules. And then how about number two? g of x equals log base seven of x minus one over x minus three. So to solve this one, again, we've got a log and we've got a fraction. So we have to apply both the log and the fraction rules. So let's start with the log rule. We're gonna do the root rule last. Log rule says the stuff inside your logarithm, which here is x minus 1 over x plus 3, has to be strictly greater than 0. Okay, so this is a rational inequality. Um, if you remember to solve a rational inequality, you need to set both your numerator 
and your denominator equal to zero, put those values on a number line and test around it. So we're going to set our numerator equal to zero and our denominator equal to zero. So if x minus 1 equals 0, that means x equals 1. And if our denominator equals 0, that means x equals negative 3. So those are going to cut our number line up into pieces. So you'll take your solution from your the bottom and from the top equaling 0. Put both of those on a number line. And these values are going to cut your number line up into pieces. So imagine taking a knife and making a cut at each one of those places. When we do that, our number line is now cut up into three sections. Everything less than negative 3, between negative 3 and 1, and then everything greater than 1. So we have to choose a representative from each piece, and then we'll test it in our original inequality here to see whether or not it works. If the representative works, that whole piece works. If the representative doesn't work, the whole piece doesn't work. Um, there's nothing special about these numbers. You can pick your favorite representative. Uh, my favorite number less than negative 3, I'm going to say is negative 5. Uh, my favorite number between negative 3 and 1, I'm going to say is 0. And my favorite number bigger than 1, I'm going to say 2. Okay, so I'm going to test each of these representatives in my inequality up here. So we'll start with x equals negative 5. When we test it in our inequality, we get negative 5 minus 1 over negative 5 plus 3, and that should be greater than 0. On top, I get negative 6. On the bottom, I get negative 2. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is 3. 3 is, in fact, greater than 0, so this works. And then x equals 0. We're going to test that in our inequality. Um, 0 minus 1 over 0 plus 3. That needs to be greater than 0. I've got negative 1 on top, 3 on the bottom. Negative 1 divided by 3 is just negative 1 third, but that's definitely not bigger than 0. It's negative, so this whole middle part doesn't work. And then now let's test 2. If I plug it into my inequality, I get 2 minus 1 over 2 plus 3. That needs to be greater than 0. On top, I get 1. On the bottom, I get 5. 1 fifth is greater than 0, so that works. Okay, so according to my log rule, everything less than negative 3 and everything bigger than 1 work. Now, how about negative 3 and 1? Do they work? Nope, there's no equal to sign here, so 1 doesn't work, and negative 3 makes the bottom 0, but we can never use that one. So here we're going to have negative infinity to negative 3, union 1 to infinity. This is this piece right here that works, and this piece is this one up here that works. Now, that's the log rule. We also have to check the fraction rule. The fraction rule says any denominator cannot be equal to 0. The denominator we have here is x plus 3. So x plus 3 can't be equal to 0, which says x cannot equal negative 3. So let's go ahead and check here. x does not equal negative 3. It's already not included. So we are good there. This is our final domain. It's everything from negative infinity to negative 3, and then including anything from 1 to infinity. So I want you to make sure that you check all of our, law, all of our rules. Um, again, fraction rule last. Between the root rule and the log rule, I think it's probably going to be easier for your brain to go from the root to the log, so I would do that. Um, and then use our um, domain rule to take the stuff inside the log, set it greater than equal to set it greater than zero, and then solve that inequality. Um, sometimes solving the inequality is going to be the hardest part about this. Um, if it's a linear inequality like this one, you can go ahead and solve the inequality as is. If it's anything bigger than in than a linear, if you have a quadratic, 
with an x squared and an x, you need to solve the equation. So change your inequality to an equal sign, and then any solutions you get from your equation, like we got from these over here, you'll put on your number line, cut it up, and test values around it in that inequality. Um, with rational inequalities, you set your top and your bottom both equal to zero, put all those solutions on a number line and test around them. Um, and when you test, you're testing in the inequality that came from your log rule. All right, hopefully that helps. Um, and then I will see you next time.